Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In today's Israel Keys video, I'll be looking over the suicide of Israel Keys. Hope you enjoy. It would be on Sunday, December 2nd of 2012 that a corrections officer doing his morning patrol at 5.57am would glance into Keyes' jail cell. The guard did a double take of the cell, surprised to see a pool of blood underneath the jail bunk. He yelled out to the cell occupant but received no response. He requested medical backup and the medical team would arrive within a few minutes. They entered the cell and stumbled upon a chilling scene. Keyes had essentially created his own crime scene, with himself playing the role of victim. Keyes would sleep face down with the blanket covering his body, and on lifting up the blanket, Keyes was found face down, body rigid and face blue. His skin was pale, likely a combined result of his death state and his lack of sun exposure, given his 23 and one lockdown lifestyle. His arms were underneath his chest and they were bloody. He was officially declared deceased at 6.13am. Small cups had been carefully placed on the cell floor by Keyes and they were filled with his blood. Keyes must have been trying to prevent a large pooling of his own blood to avoid being caught. A closer inspection of Keyes' body would reveal that the blood had come from slit wounds along his left wrist. Keyes had used a razor blade to create an incision along his vein. This razor blade, which Keyes had moulded onto a pencil for better leverage, was covered in blood and was found underneath his chest. For some unknown reason, he had never been made to hand it back to the guards, as was jail procedure. This makes me question if certain guards were aware of the suicide taking place and simply turned a blind eye to what Keyes was doing. Either way, the neglect of responsibility by guards to remove this clear suicide enabler really showcases how Keyes easily took advantage of the lack of jailhouse security and was well aware of its flaws. It might sound like Keyes had died because of blood loss, but no, he had taken his suicide a step further. Keyes, lying face down, had tied his bedsheet around his neck and then tied the other end around his left ankle. He had positioned his left ankle up against his butt, the end result being that as he fell deeper into unconsciousness because of blood loss, his leg would lower, tightening the sheet's grip around his neck. At his autopsy, the coroner couldn't determine whether Keyes had died from blood loss or asphyxiation. The cause of death given was exsanguination, a combination of both. Keyes had left a bloodstained note in his notepad, presumably for the investigators to read and study for clues. His note was cringy and expressed the anger that he held toward modern American society. It has been described as serial killer poetry and a creepy ode to murder. Aside from his own tribute to his life of causing pain and misery, it really provided an insight into his narcissistic personality they had been known to reveal around friends of his ex-partner when he was drunk. In these drunken moments of years past, Keyes was critical of American people and the consumeristic seeking out fame and fortune society which essentially made America the land of opportunity. Not only did Keyes leave a ranting note, but he also left blood-drawn skulls, 11 in total, along with a goat symbol likely representing himself. The conclusion that this gives is that Keyes had 11 total victims. On one of the blood-drawn skulls, Keyes had left the words, also in blood, we are one. Keyes had stated that his memories, or rather his victims, were his, and this seems to coincide with the we are one words. In his mind, the victims now belonged to him. He was the only one who knew their fates, and now he had full control of them. Very disturbing. The words Corazol or Belize, and these vary based on where you find the information, were left on the jail cell wall by Keyes. This was written in blood as well. Was Keyes hinting to another victim or victims in Belize? Or was he simply toying with investigators? He hadn't given any victim names in his final written note after all, so it doesn't seem like he would give them any truthful information at this point. H.H. H. Holmes, who Keyes had spoke upon in at least two of the interrogations, had confessed prior to his execution, but literally when he was about to be executed, he recanted his confessions. This would have left ambiguity as to what really took place with Holmes and his crimes. Keyes did something similar, although he never confessed to much. Keyes left ambiguity by referring to Belize, hoping to stir up theories and additional investigations that he wouldn't be taking part in. It would seem like this ambiguity is something that Keyes would have got off on. He possessed the answers and they died with him. Keyes had mentioned that he would have rather believed that if his family had ever been murdered, then he would like to believe that they resided in Mexico, by the beach. 
The lifelong unknown answers to the families of his victims who were seeking knowledge as to where their loved ones truly were prevented any type of closure for them. Keyes' act of suicide meant that his victims' families would never gain any closure. This was a truly sadistic act of power and control. I will now read Keyes' suicide note. I do believe that some of it was unreadable and unobtainable given the amount of blood that had spilled onto the paper. Where will you go, you clever little worm, if you bleed your host dry? Back in your ride, the night is still young. Streetlights push back the black neat rows. Off to the right, a graveyard appears. Lines of stones, bodies moulder below. Turn away quick, bob your head to the seat. A straight through that stop sign you roll. Loaded truck with lights off, slams into your broadside. Your flesh smashed as metal explodes. You may have been free, you love living your lie. Fate had its own scheme, crushed like a bug, you still die. Soon now you'll join those ranks of dead, or your ashes the wind will soon blow. Family and friends will shed a few tears, pretend it's off to heaven you go. But the reality is you are just bones and meat, and with your brain died also your soul. Send the dying to wait for their death in the comfort of retirement homes. Quietly, quickly say it's for the best. It's best for you, so their fate you will not know. Turn the blind eye back to the screen. Soak in your reality shows. Stand in front of your mirror and you preen, in a plastic castle you call home. Land of the free, land of the light, land of scheme, Americanize. Consume what you don't need, stars you idolize, pursue what you admit is a dream, then it's American die. Get in your big car so you can get to work fast, on roads made of dinosaur bones. Punch in on the clock and sit on your ass, playing stupid ass games on your phone. Paper on your wall says you got smarts, the test that you took told you so but you would still crawl like the vermin you are once your precious power grid's blown. Land of the free, land of the lie, land of the scheme, American eyes. Now that I have you held tight, I will tell you a story. Speak soft in your ear so you know that it's true. You're my love at first sight, and though you're scared to be near me, my words penetrate your thoughts now in an intimate prelude. I looked in your eyes, they were so dark woman trusting, as though you had not a worry or care. The more guileless the game, the better potential to fill up those pools with your fear. Your face framed in dark curls like a portrait, the sun shone through highlights of red. What colour, I wonder, and how straight will it turn plastered back with the sweat of your blood? Your wet lips were a promise of a sweet unspoken, Nervous laugh as it bursts like a pulse of blood from your throat. There'll be no more laughter here. I feel your body tense up, my hand now on your shoulder, your eyes. Forget the lady called Luck. She does not abide near me, for her powers don't extend to those who are dead. Then it's illegible words. Would that I keep you, let you be the master of your own fate, knowing full well what's at stake. My pretty captive butterfly, colourful wings my hand smears. I somehow repaint them with punishment and tears. Violent metamorphosis, emerge my dark moth princess. I would come often and worship on the altar of your flesh. You shudder with revulsion and try to shrink far from me. I'll have you tied down and begging to become my Stockholm sweetie. Okay, talk is over, words are placid and weak. Back it with action or it all comes off cheap. Watch close while I work now, fear the electric shock of my touch. Open my trembling flower or your petals I'll crush. This has been the suicide of Israel Keys. Be sure to comment your thoughts below. As always, thank you for watching.